Lucio, Kinemagi, and Anna Erlin and welcome to this production of the Mind Math Network. Today's edition, Chapter 6, Lesson 11, Divide Decimals by Whole Numbers. Before continuing on into this video, you should have the Chapter 6, a Lesson 11, Divide Decimals by Whole Numbers packet, located on page 443. It'll be part of your lesson 19 packet. If you need this, go ahead and pause the video and I will see you on the other side. Welcome back. Thank you for grabbing those papers and thank you for those who waited patiently. So let's look at the essential question for chapter six. How is multiplying and dividing decimals similar to multiplying and dividing whole numbers? I'll begin by investigating the math. Where do you place the decimal point in the quotient when dividing a decimal by a whole number. Well, if you recall back to yesterday's episode, one of the things you could do, let's say we have 7.55 divided by five. What I can do is write it using the standard algorithm. And I can go ahead and write it right up there. Five goes into seven one time. We subtract, you get a two, bring down, you get a five. Goes in there five times. Five times five is 25. Who says I can't sing? Well, other than pretty much everybody. I bring down the five. Goes in one time, one times five is five. at 1.51. So if you're using the standard algorithm, it's easy just to write the decimal directly above where it is in your dividend. So that's one way to look at this. Lacey bought two snacks for $1.70. Each snack costs the same amount. How much do they cost? So let's use our standard algorithm. There are two snacks. And it became $1.70. Immediately start by doing this so I don't forget. And because two doesn't go into one, I'm going to put a zero there just for place value purposes. It's not a requirement, but not a bad idea right now, especially when it's in the ones place. So now I'm going to go into 17. Well, I know that two times eight is 16, so I'm going to go there. I subtract, I get a one. One is smaller than two, bring down the zero, I get a 10. Two goes into 10 five times. Five times two is 10. Subtract, nada. My answer is 85 cents or 85 hundredths of a dollar. So you notice I keep the decimal point line straight up and down there. Let's go right into the book here on page 443. Example, basic. And you'll see the top portion of the content here. There'll be two slides to, to cover what's on your one page 443. And I begin by reading example, basic. There are eight and four tenths meters left on a roll of ribbon. Nancy wants to cut the ribbon in half. What will be the size of each piece of ribbon? So I'm gonna bring out my annotation tool here. And first we'll estimate. 8.4 to the nearest whole number is closer to 8 divided by 2, 4. So my answer when I'm done should be near 4. So I start over here. How many times does 2 go into 8? Well, the answer is 4 times. 4 times 2 is 8. I subtract, I get a 0. I bring down, and I get a 4. 2 goes into 4 twice. 2 times 2 is 4. There's no remainder, we're good. So you see that, and I'm gonna make it brighter, the decimal points were lined up with each other. And that's how it needs to be. And once you line it up with the quotient, between the dividend and quotient, at no point else do you actually even need to worry about it on this problem. 
So it's right at the beginning, and then we just move on with ourselves. Unlike multiplication, where you need to count the number of spots on this one. Let's go ahead and write that in. Anytime that I am, when I go ahead and say, well, I'm going to clear all drawings, that's my warning to you that I'm going to clear it off. And at that point, if I'm moving too fast for you, you should pause the video to finish writing down what you need to write down and then unpause the video and you're ready. Either way, I'm going to give you about another 15 or 20 seconds on this one. Also keep in mind, it's a good idea to write as I go um, to the best of your ability. That way you have this resource when we're done. And if you're for some reason missing a packet, paper will always work too. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and clear the drawing. You see that uh, checking our work, we're good. And by the way, 4.2 is pretty close to four. So we now have the and I'll fill this in here. Make sure I'm gonna go ahead and cheat and let it do it myself for me. And you saw right up here in the upper right is the, the answer we had. 8.4 divided by two is 4.2. Each piece of ribbon will be 4.2 meters long or four and two tenths. And I can check my work by multiplying. 4.2 times four is 8.4. Um, if you were so inclined to use models, you could take two groups of 4.2 Bejik, Nish, Nisweyin, Niwin, Nanin, Good Westway, Nish Westway, Nish Westway, and then Bejik, Nish, Nisweyin, Niwin to get to 8.4. Make sure you've gone ahead and written this in. All right, I'm going to go ahead and move on to the next slide. We'll go to the top of page 444, triple four. And this is the example niche. We're going to find $6.54 divided by 12 and round to the nearest cent. So you see our steps here and the checks there's a small amount that's not on this slide, but we'll come to it. And we begin with, move that up here. We know it's a zero point, because 12 does not go into six. Um, and we know if we have a two digit divisor, it's never gonna go into the first number, because uh, you can't put two into one. But, unless of course, yeah, there is no cars. So we'll go into 65 and I know that 12 times five is 60. So I'm gonna put a five in here and we're in this column. Now five times 12 is 60. My next step is subtract five minus zero is five. Five is less than 12. So I'm gonna go ahead and bring down this four. And I remembered that just moments ago, five times 12 was 60. 54 is six less. So let's go ahead and put a four. Four times 12 is 48. And you'll find that as you get comfortable with this, you'll start seeing patterns and numbers saying, oh, that's pretty close. I'll just go ahead and use this. 54 minus 48 is six. Six is less than 12, I bring down to zero. And I'm gonna be honest with you. Yeah, five times 12 was 60 up here. Five times 12 is 60 down here. So we're gonna put a five. We already know our math. So we have a, digit of 0 0.545. And if you notice, they had a zero here that wasn't over here. And that's that step three and next is zero. That way you, because you need to get to a ending point. Where if I left it at 6.54, I'm gonna have a remainder. You don't want a quotient that has decimals and a remainder. That's not really a good idea. Um, and this is what you're gonna be looking forward to as you go into middle school math, um, is remainders start to be phased out in the place of decimals or fractions. Although they are still welcome when, when applicable in this class. 
All right, so we have 0 0.545. I'm gonna go, you should have this written in. If not, pause the video. So I'm gonna go ahead and clear the screen. Can you see the 545? And we are around to the nearest cent. And when we talk to the nearest cent, it's the hundreds place. I have, so I look at the four, I look at the number to the right. That five means I'm gonna add one to the four. So I get 0 0.55. I could check my work by multiplying my quotient of 0 0.545 or 545 thousandths times 12. And I'd end up with six and 540 thousandths. All right, let's do some guided practice. I want you to do it along with me. And I'm gonna start out here, three goes into four one time. Four minus three is one. And I'm gonna put over here, divide, multiply, subtract, check, and bring down. This is a reminder. All right, one is less than three. So I have an eight. Three goes into 18 six times. So 16, and I put my decimal place right up above. Six times three is 18, as I mentioned. Get a zero, bring down the three. Three goes into three one time. One times three is three. It's identity property. Anytime you multiply by one, it stays the same. Get a zero, bring down the three. I'm gonna go one more time. One times three is three. So my answer is 16 point 11, 16 and 11 hundredths. Let's do this one here on number two together. Make sure you're writing this in as we go. At the end of this video or section, you should pause the video if you haven't written. Two, I'm gonna put my decimal place there. When possible, it's a good idea. Two, two goes into eight four times. Four times two is eight. Subtract, I get a zero. I don't need to keep writing my decimal place going this way um, because there's no point to it. As long as it's up in my quotient, we're good. And two goes into eight again four more times. Four times two is eight, subtract, zero. I check it, zero is less than two. There's nothing to bring down, 4.4. Again, key details. One, you divide as if it was whole numbers. And two, make sure your decimal place or points are lined up between your dividend, which is the number being divided, and your quotient, your answer. All right, I'm going to go ahead and clear the video or the, the screen. If you need to pause the video, do that. If not, come along with. The top, well, you see the answers. We did good. Is the quotient of 9.3 divided by 15 greater than or one or less than one? Well, nine divided by 15 is definitely less than one. It's gonna be closer to like 0.6. Um, and yes, this is where now we can get answers less than one for sure. Can't be in the negative though. And if you had $9, you couldn't give it to 15 people without breaking down the change. All right, here's some practice for you guys. I want you to do numbers three and five. You're gonna pause the video you're gonna write it using your standard algorithm. So I would go up and down versus writing it there. And then when you're done, unpause the video and see how you did. You may pause the video now. Welcome back, let's see how you did. 145.8 divided by 12 is 12.15, which I believe 12 times 12 is 144. So that puts us right in that area. 22.11 divided by 11 is 2.01. And you know what, I wanna talk, well, we didn't talk about that one, but I'm going to get my annotation tool here. Cause you remember, this is just as a reminder, cause I know that it's been a while. We know that 11 went into 22 twice. Two times 11 is 22, subtract, get a zero. There's my decimal place. 
I bring down, I get a one. 11 doesn't go into one, so I put a zero. Zero times 11 is zero. Subtract, I have a one, and I bring down the other one. And 11 goes into one, one time, one times 11 is 11. Looks like a smiley face-ish. So remember that if it doesn't go in there, you have to put a zero up in your quotient. And that's very important. All right, and number five, the one you were expected to do, you got an answer of 2.4. Let's practice a couple more. Let's step down to number nine. Actually, now I'm going to have you go ahead and with these. I want you to do number six and eight, and then we'll bounce to the back a little bit. So go ahead and pause the video, do number six and eight, and then I'll see you on the other side. You can pause the video now. Welcome back. Let's see how you did. Number six was 1.55 and number eight, 5.04. Notice because they wrote big, they did not line those up. I would expect that you would do better and make sure they're actually lined up here. All right, let's go down here. I want you to do number 10. But and the reason I'm having you do number 10, because I want to make sure you're paying attention to your actions. Round to the nearest tenth. So go ahead and pause the video, do number 10. I'll see you on the other side. Oh, welcome back. Let's see how you did. And it rounds to 1.6. So let's talk about that one real quick here. Four went into six one time. I'm putting my decimal place there so I don't forget. One times four is four. I subtract, get two. Two comes down. It's gonna go in five times. Five times four is 20. Bring down the eight, get 28. Four goes into 28 seven times. Seven times four is tw 28. And now at 1.57, going to the nearest tenth though, I look at the five, the number to the right is a seven, so that goes up to six and I get a 1.6. All right, let's look at the assignment. Again, put your name on front and back. You have options for turning these in. You could take a picture of both sides after you have your names on it and either scan or e scan it or take a picture and then email to me at mirland at psychchipschool.net. Make sure you include both sides or text both sides to me at 989-750-1640. Another option is to fill out the pages and then type the answers into your Google form. Although that doesn't give me an opportunity to see the little parts. So you want to keep that paper around in case you're struggling and I want to talk with you about it. Or if you're in one of the in-person groups, um, you can always bring the paper to class or exchange it at the next paper exchange. Looking at Simon, always make sure you read the homework helper down here, check your answer. And that just means use some multiplication to double check. Um, same thing with dividing story problems and you're good to go. If you're struggling with this, um, please reach out to me at mirlandpsychchipschool.net and we can discuss wherever the issue is, if it's with decimal points or with the actual algorithms of division. I hope you all have a minogijigad. Minwa, bamapi.